It appears we have some time to mock some things up, seeing as how the crankshaft that I took to get balanced six weeks ago, the guy still hadn't called me back. I called him yesterday, but I didn't get an answer. So we have some time to do some thinking. One thing is the oiling system. What do we want to do for an oiling system? Well, the stock system is not really adequate for stock, but if, if you have a stock type car and it's in showroom condition, then you're pretty much married to using that. But everybody else needs a bigger pan, more oil capacity. These things flow a lot of oil through them. They're not as much down there in the pan that you would like to have. So the stock oil pump leaves you pretty limited to what you can do. Yes, you can run the uh, stock pickup to a bigger pan and everything, but you're not going to be as versatile. So let's forget the stock oil pickup and go a different direction. As you know, the Cali's block and the World block have the port in the front for the oil feed, which all that's doing is putting it in here instead of coming up from the pickup. This is a simple line with a simple pan and a static pickup. It's nothing fancy, but just something to get the thing started and figure out, I don't even know what kind of car this is going to go in yet, and so it's hard to pick a proper oil pan and oiling system. We have several variations. Of course, we can use the stock pump using this for the pickup, or I guess the normal pump for this, an engine like this, you could just use the high volume pump. That'll give you plenty of oil. If you wanted something sexier, the Mylodon aluminum pump, you know, that's that's pretty. You know, I like that. I like that. And if you wanted a dual line set up, which has kind of a been a Hemi thing for 50 years, then you can use the fancy top cover. You'll have a different pickup here for two lines. You'll have this feeding the top, this feeding or the bottom, and this feeding the top of the pump. Dual line is sexy. And then they have, uh, if you have a block that doesn't have a port here, you can use this pump, and that gives you a line there. And then you can run that as a single line, or you can run it as a dual line with the other top plate. Now, I know what you people want me to run because you just won't do right. You think that I need the big Keith Black top fuel pump. This is a dual line in and these go to the remote filter. But you know, we're not running top fuel. I, I don't think we need a top fuel pump. Uh, you're, you're not going to like what I want to run, but There's a reason. I just want to put the stock oil pump on it. And I know that we have race clearances and that we may not get the oil pressure like we want, but there's a reason I want to run the stock pump. And if this doesn't work, that's fine. I'll just put the high volume pump on it. It's only four bolts once you've got everything else already done. The reason I want to run the stock pump is because of this. As some of you may know, my favorite car in the world is a 1965 Super Stock Dodge. They came with these aluminum oil pumps, which are, have the same dimensionals as the stock pump. But they're cast out of aluminum instead. I bought this one a few decades ago from a guy and it's heavily scored on the inside. So I want, I don't know if you can see how bad that thing is scored. 
So what I want to do is, once I get a test stand built where we can run this thing, I want to run the start with a stock pump. I want to get a baseline of what it's building for pressure and everything. Then I want to put this on here to see if I'll ever be able to use it. Can I make it work? That's, that's the reason I want to start with the stock pump. In the mid-70s, the National Hemi owners had these on the newsletter for sale for, they found a big hoard of them, and I think they may have started out at $19 or $24 and then went to the other price. But I don't think anybody that bought one ran them, you know, they're, they're just sitting around somebody's place somewhere. If, if you know somebody that got one of those, I'd like to buy one. I think the casting number is the part number on these, which is 24689.53. So I'd like to get one of these if you know where one's at. But that's the plan. We'll get this oiling system figured out and get going. This is the stock oil pump, the Melling M63. The high volume pump would be a 63 HV for high volume. It's just a quarter inch thicker, longer rotors, higher volume. So if you're going to use one of those, you need bolts that are a quarter inch longer if you want to be proper. Myodon sells that little gizmo to uh, adjust your oil pressure if you like that idea. And, and yeah, I guess you need some spare gaskets because this one seemed to got broken half in shipping. That O-ring looks small, doesn't it? I guess it'll work. The, these things are made out of cast iron, so, you know, you have to kind of look at them. Now, 100,000 people have bought these new and bolted on their car and drove away, so you can do that, but, you know, it's nice to take them apart. These things could be sitting around your shop 15 or 20 years without being used, so, you know, normally there's going to be some dirt or something in them. I would say this one's pretty clean. Don't lose your O-rings. I would say this one's pretty clean. Uh, but you know, they could be dirt in here, well, that's pretty clean, and there can be uh, well, a little bit of rust, a little bit of scoring from their test run, wasn't it? I guess maybe they need, <laughs> but you know, it doesn't look that bad. Sometimes they're filthy, this one's really just oily I don't I don't think that's bad you know I mean I'm happy but you need to know make sure that it's right and everything um, oh and when you bolt this to the block Ma Mopar says don't use any gasket sealer on this gasket but that's pretty simple but if, if, if it's dirty in there, you know, you're going to want to wash it out with some Varsol, and you can take this apart. This is not real complicated. You can handle it. Okay, add this to your list of why you mock up everything before a final assembly. This brand of rocker arm and this brand of head don't like each other. We're hitting right here not allowing the rocker arm to go all the way down so I'll take that off and sand it a little bit on that corner I went ahead and clearance that rocker arm where it'll have some room here when you're doing that don't don't just barely clear it because there may be a problem from head to head or the next set of heads you get I just used the Chinese disc sander and just sanded it. So now everything fits there. So our next little uh, problem on our mock-up is 
I've noticed how I know you can't see this on camera very well but you hear that ting that's not hitting the valve watch right here it's hitting the retainer then you hear that ting of it hitting the valve so what are we going to do about that some people might just clearance it here and that'll probably work and everything will probably be fine but I'm not willing to do that probably the easiest way out would just be to run lash caps and that will pick it up to where it'll clear it but I hate to do something that easy you could just drive yourself crazy on this instead one of the problems is Edel Edelbrock's valves this part above here is called the tip and a stock tip is two hundred thousandths. Some people nowadays run two fifty. It's a little better, especially when you're running lash caps and everything. But you gotta, you need some room here. But this is sub two hundred. The exhaust is a little over two hundred, and the exhaust has plenty of clearance. It's all fine. So, uh, Ray Barton was having Manley make him valves that had a little longer tip. And he likes the radial groove because, you know, super stock people, you know how they are. But, unfortunately, he hasn't been able to get any lately. I would like to just buy the longer valves. You know, this particular head, this particular rocker arm, this particular rocker. I've got interference, this particular retainer. Now, if I could find some flat retainer, you know, this is the head, the intake side was one that had too much open here anyway. If I had some retainers that were flat instead of this dished, then this would probably clear. So that's another angle that I can look at. You, you can find hemi valves with a 250 tip that would solve the problem but remember these are 232 intakes which is not standard by any stretch of the imagination so you're married to Edelbrocks which are too short and I'm sure they don't have any anyway or waiting on Manly to make some longer ones for Ray Barton so that's something that I'm gonna have to work on and see if I can figure a way out of. Now we need to look at our rocker arm to valve tip. And what we have, we have a non-standard head with non-standard rocker stands with non-stock rockers. I guess there's a variance in everything. So we have to check everything. This is not like the old days when you just, you were running stock parts, you get your other parts from Napa, you put them on, you drive away, nothing's easy anymore. We have to check everything. So as you can see, looks like the rocker arm is a little too far this way. We want to center it better than that. What we can do, these shims that protect the stand from the rocker, we can put one or two extra in here. You probably can't go over two because the push rod will contact the boss down here, depending on the size of your push rods. And so on this particular one, there's one extra, and it looks like I, I want to try two on this one. So you'll have to do this rocker by rocker. So I guess I should have told you, order an extra set of these. We can't even order push rods until we, when everything's non-standard, there is no push rod that's going to fit, unless you just get lucky, have some 
laying around in your private stash. But we can't even order push rods until we get all these retainer to rocker items fixed. And But anyway, just check this. Line it up the best you can. It doesn't have to meet, be exactly in the middle. It's not like we're trying to make 5,000 horsepower or anything. Just look at everything. That's all I'm saying. Okay, I mocked this up with a lash cap. The lash cap is 55 thousandths net thickness. And you can see that it solved the problem of the retainer to rocker arm clearance here. Now, most Hemi people are roller cam people, and they're going to run lash caps anyway. So that's really an easy out. But this is not a killer motor. This is just a flat tap it motor. I, I would rather not run them if I could keep from it. The... The tip now is 200, and the last cap is giving us 55. It's really a little under 200. So if I had the same valves with the groove at, uh, with a 250 tip, then that would get me where I want to be. Uh, because remember, this had too much uh, uh, spring height anyway, so that would also take that down some, and I'd have to run less shims under the valves. So that's... I'll have to do some figuring out if I can get valves, etc. The since we're using the stock type of rocker setup, you can't really change your geometry, so to speak. But it's worth checking. And as you see, the roller is a little bit on this side of the valve before it starts to open. And then you'll see it walk over a little and I think that's uh, that looks pretty good. I don't think we're unhappy with that. And there's our witness mark on the last cap. Not perfectly centered, but I'm not unhappy. In the next episode, hopefully the crankshaft balancer will be done with that and getting closer to final assembly.